Hey guys, unfortunately it's me again. So, new year, new you. You finally want to learn Unreal Engine 5.3 and above, but all of the video tutorials are kind of long. So to be quite frank, this video is for people who have never really touched Unreal Engine and want to get up and running as quickly as possible without sitting through tedious hour-long tutorials that are never going to get to the point. Or you're eating lunch right now and want something to watch while you are eating. In either case, I got your back. You only have 10 minutes. I don't want to do this any longer than 10 minutes. I'm going to go over a lot of those things that you heard in those other tutorials that you can't quite make sense of in order for you to be able to deep dive into your next topic next time you watch a YouTube tutorial. So let's put 10 minutes on the clock, a like and subscribe on my channel. Business inquiries are in the description below. Let's start and I assume you have already downloaded Unreal Engine. So we're going to just start a new project up there. There's a lot of things that you can choose from. Choose the one that comes your idea the nearest. Usually it is a third person game or a first person game. I'm just gonna quickly, I myself, I'm going with a third person project. I'm going to rename it to tutorial and we're good to go. All right, let's have a look at this. This is your working window. Yours might look a little bit different than mine because I have already customized mine quite a bit. This is the layout that I like, but your mileage may vary. I like to have the place actors on the side. You can have all of those windows up here in windows and then just see what you want to have. So how do you move? Right click into the scene. You can look around with your mouse. WASD will move you. Scrolling forwards will make you faster and scrolling backwards will make you so much slower. Additionally, you can do this up here as well. The camera speed will change with you scrolling. So you can always see what is going on. Always start with a template. If you're new to all of this, I'd suggest always starting with a template. It's easy, it's fast, it gets you going really quickly and you don't have to do everything by scratch. In fact, this is already a working game. I can press play and we have our demo level and this is actually, well, a fu fully functional game. We can export this and have it run on our computer. But more on that later on. Let's go to, over the UI again. On the right side, you have your outliner. Everything that is placed within your viewport is going to be found in your outliner as well. This ramp, this cube, this floor, Everything can be activated and deactivated in your outliner as well. It's good style to keep it clean and tidy, especially if those levels get a bit bigger, you will be thankful. Same with your content browser. Usually your content browser is got down here at content drawer. I like to dock it in a layout because then it's not going away. You will need it quite a lot. Now that we know what is going on, we want to know how it is going on. So first and foremost, a lot of games are made out of 3D geometry, as you might have realized. This 3D geometry is either created on your own using Blender or any other 3D software. Let's have this mercenary robot, for instance. And you import stuff into Unreal Engine via your content browser. This is why I always want to have it docked. I'm making a new folder, character, click on it, write import into game, desktop, and we have our robot one. Importing looks always the same. However, if you have a skeletal mesh that we are going to import, which we have, we're going to tick those two boxes. They are ticked by default because Unreal Engine is smart. We're just going to leave it as it is and import everything. As you, as you can see in our content browser, we now have a lot of cool things and we can now drag and drop this skeletal mesh into our world and it is there. If we play the game, it is still there and already has colliders. This is how you add 3D geometry to the game. You can see it has already been automatically added to our outline on the right side. And now we have a quick look at it. Double click on this one and you see there's a lot of smart things going on. The most important thing that every 3D asset has is a material slot. Materials are like one of the three components a 3D geometry can have basically, right? One of them is the 3D geometry itself. Second of all is the texture, the, the material, like how it looks. And third of all, might be like an underlying skeletal, which this one has because it needs to be animated and is somewhat human. Whenever you have this folder with a magnifying glass next to it, this will automatically redirect you or find the asset in your content browser. So let's click on a material and let's talk about materials. This is your material tab. This is the last logic block. This defines how your 3D geometry is going to look like. So this is basically the final result, the last block, whatever happens left to it, right? Like this block, for instance, this is going 
to be the other side of the equation. So on the left side, you can build whatever you want to by just right clicking and searching for a function that you want to look for, connect the white dots and then just, and just change the values as you see fit. For instance, I don't want to, I don't want it to be metallic at all. I don't want it to be specular at all. It's just pure roughness, which is not a good look, but for the sake of this tutorial, we have our equation on the left side and our material on, on the right side. Apply, save, and you already have altered your first material. We can save our robot as well. Let's close those windows. It's not much of a difference right now, but there has to be a more intuitive way to change those material settings. And there is, and there's also a very much more performance friendly way in creating material instances. Material instances are just children of your mother material. It's basically the same, but the parameters can be different, but it's referencing the same material, which is less work intensive for the computer. For that, we need to set something up. Let's say I want to change the metallic on the fly. Right click on it, promote the parameter, and it's called metallic. That's all you got to do. Now there's a value on it, and we can change our metallic value. Our multiplication parameter is going to be set by right clicking, promote the parameter, and this is going to be a multiplication parameter. And our mother material is complete. Right now, this looks like crap, obviously, but if we do right click, create material instance, we create a child, and this is going to be our child number one. Now, if we have a look at this, this is this looks different. We clicked on material, but it looks different because now our parameters are exposed. Metallic and multiplication. Let's multiply by one. Nothing has changed. Why has nothing changed? Oh, because our character has not applied the new material yet. How do we do this? Drag and drop as usual, as usual. So if we multiply this, we can see real time changes. Metallic, make it more metallic, make it less metallic. Working with material instances is highly recommended. Now we know how to add 3D geometry and how to make it look pretty and how to add materials. There's one thing that you will not get around when using Unreal Engine and these are blueprints. Blueprints are the logic of a game and there are, there are a lot of blueprint classes. Right click on here, blueprint class and you are down. That is a lot. I can promise you for the first year, you're probably only going to use the actor. Blueprint actor. For starting out, the most important classes of blueprints are your blueprint actor and your level blueprint. Open level blueprint. This is how your blueprint editor looks like. This is, pro this is the logic that your game runs on. Level blueprints are cool for level specific rules. Stuff that is only applying to your level that you're in right now. If your game only has one level, maybe leave this one empty or only use if really, really necessary. Otherwise, it's getting messy really, really quickly. Other blueprint actors look like this maybe. Because a blueprint actor can be anything. We can, for instance, add a skeletal mesh. And this skeletal mesh is our robot. We call it robot, robot one. We compile, we save, and now we drag and drop this blueprint actor in here and our robot one is here. It's looking not all too great. So we're going to drag in our material instance. And now there's virtually no difference between this actor and this actor. Apart from this, being a blueprint actor now, which means we can give him some logic. Blueprints can be scary and intimidating at the beginning, but don't worry, they will get your friend pretty quickly. Once you realize there is probably a function for almost everything you will ever need. In the beginning, there are only three things that really need to matter to you when thinking about how to start a blueprint. What is triggering my action? What is the action? And how is it going to react to my input? Let's say I have a variable that I can create over here. I can drag and drop this into the blueprint set variable. And now my three components are, I have every event, which means basically every frame. It's not quite the same, but let's just say it is. Every frame, what is triggering my, my action. I want my variable plus, there you go, to go up by one. This is based, that's already it. But since I want to see it, I'm going to print a string with this variable. Compile, save, we're good to go. So we have our what triggers it, 
what is going to happen and how do we want to react to it. We want to just export it, not export it, but show it on screen. And if we hit play now, we have a counter that is counting upwards. Printing strings is a great way to debug your code really quickly and you will find yourself doing this way down the line too. I just put together the most simple interaction system, which is if my player character is colliding with the sphere that I have put around my character, then it is going to say hello. And it is, you can see it says hello on the, on the left upper screen. Perfectly, perfectly fine. And with that, you basically have all of the components to make yourself your own walking simulator if you want to. You can create your level, you know how to import 3D geometry that you can get on Blender or the Marketplace. You can plug it together like Lego. You know how to start a game, and now you know how to basically interact with blueprints. And even a little interaction system is there as well. So if, whenever you approach something or you press something, which would look like something like keyboard G print string, I'm the G in your level blueprint. Perfect, perfect, safe. And let's go and let's press some G. I am the G. There you go. Now you can trigger stuff with your keyboard and button interactions. You know how to change materials and how to build the materials. And the only thing that is left is just to customize all of this and make it your own. So I think we are well over the 10 minutes. And this is your quick, quick crash course in Unreal Engine 5.3. There are a lot of tutorials out there, but now you know the basics and can skip through all of those without fear of missing anything out. All right, check out the other videos that I have on my channel about Unreal Engine 5 if you wanna go into more detail, especially when it comes to interfaces and blueprint casting, because that can be quite difficult. But other than that, thank you very much for your time and I'll see you guys in the next video.